Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Thank you all for watching yet another one. And having said that, researchers reveal the mystery behind Ripple's XRP escrows. Ooh -hoo. So my question of today is, do you fully understand XRP? That is the question for today. Do you think you have a good understanding or are you just buying because you thought it looked good or because of the videos or something like that, even though, once more, none of these videos are financial advice? Since the creation of the escrows, Ripple has sold 180 million XRP per month. Ripple made its largest XRP sales during the third quarter of 2018 and the second quarter of 2019. And I do believe that a lot of people are confused with what exactly is happening here, what the escrow is all for, and why a billion XRP has been sent to Ripple every single month. Because I see so many people asking about it. So today, hopefully, I can clear a little bit of that up. Of course, we got more crypto news coming up here, but let's start it out. Researcher Leonidas has done an extensive research on the XRP escrow accounts of Ripple. There are many myths about this escrow's operation and the impact it has on the XRP price performance. Hajiloisu has set up to clear them up. The researcher begins his report by outlining exactly how the escrow works. According to his findings and the explanation made by Ripple CTO David Swartz, the escrow is an XRP ledger feature that allows an entity to program payment for any amount of token or tokens. The XRP remains locked in until the conditions are met that have been placed by yourself. Ripple created 55 escrows in December of 2017, locking up 1 billion XRP in each for a total of 55 billion. One of these escrows expires every month, and Ripple has access to the funds. In its latest move for March, Ripple sold 100 million XRP and returned 900 million, the researcher stated. There is two things to say right here. One, if you really think, for example, that XRP should actually have a way higher market cap, actually being about double, you would not necessarily be wrong. So from a certain perspective, XRP should still be in the number three spot. Why? Well, if you think about it, for the longest time, the actual supply of XRP was a lot higher. That is also why there's a difference between total supply and circulating supply. This is the total supply, including Ripple and everything, minus all the burned, for example, coins. And this is the real circulating supply, minus a lot of the coins that are not being moved or are in escrow. But the thing is, the coins have all been mined before. They've just been locked up by people themselves. And that really does spark up a question. Should they be considered for market cap? Because, well, they could vote to have them out all together at once because it's an escrow feature. But hey, with an 80% majority vote, you can really get a lot of things done. And since they have already been mined, they're already kind of out there. They've just been locked for a little while, but they're out there, right? So that kind of sparks up a question. How locked is it? Would you consider... Coins that are locked, for example, for, for some staking features without utility, but just a staking for profit, for example. There's some algorithms out there that do not have staking for security features, but, so I guess not staking for, you know, consensus, so to speak, or just some miscellaneous feature. Would that be considered coins out of circulation then too? Or do you consider that to be in circulation still because you could take them back out? What if it's locked for a little while? Then, you know, I'm just thinking about that. Should it really be higher? That is something you can argue. But that's also why some articles have in the past pointed out to XRP actually having a higher market cap. And some places like, I believe maybe CoinGecko or so, also actually go out from the total of XRP outstanding because, hey, Ripple holds them, but they are there. And then the second part is, well, we don't really know if they actually sold the 100 million XRP. We know they have them. We know 100 million has been kept by Ripple and 900 million has been sent back. We don't know what exactly happened to the 100 million. We just know Ripple has got that. Ripple has re-escrowed 32.8 billion out of the 40 billion released since January 2018. On average, Ripple releases about 180 million every month. So that's, of course, really up and down, right? Usually, it's about 100 million that they keep and 900 million that they send back. In addition, it was determined by Hajiloizu that Ripple created 11 different wallets to hold the escrow Hajiloisu stated that out of the original 11 wallets, 8 have been emptied, but Ripple has created 8 additional wallets. With this, Ripple makes sure to that each escrow holds a maximum of 1 billion XRP. The last escrow created by Ripple has an expiration date of April 2025. The researcher states, For April 2025, 800 million XRP are in escrow. In the next month, when Ripple creates new escrows, it will escrow 200 million XRP, ending in that month of April 2025, and the rest for May 2025. This will go on for some time now which basically will go on for a huge amount of years as they keep pushing that date back. Ripple's transparency when selling XRP, contrary to the belief that has become popular, 
Haji Loisi believes that Ripple has been transparent with its sales and all escrow related activity, which I have disputed a couple times on the channel. And even though you guys all know, I'm extremely bullish on XRP. I'm one of the biggest bulls you'll find out there. I, of course, have my doubts and things too, right? And one of the doubts was, of course, what exactly is Ripple spending the XRP on? Are they enriching themselves in some way, shape, or form that I'm not liking or something along those lines? Like, how can I find it out exactly? And I've always said, if you have the answers, let me know and I'd be really freaking happy. And is this a problem for me? Definitely not. But it's just something that you really want to have, right? You want to know exactly what Ripple is doing with that. He says the researcher, oh wait, he, the researcher presented the graph below showing that Ripple had its highest period of XRP sales during the third quarter of 2018 to the second quarter of 2019. And here you can see the sales. The graph is not too beautiful, but you can actually look it up for yourself if you want to. I'll quickly look it up here on the side so I can show it to you guys, hopefully. After that period, the payment solution company adopted a more conservative approach to its XRP sales. Quote, since then, sales of the token have slowly considerably uh, have slowed considerably as the graph shows. Ripple's strategy has been to expand the number of RippleNet members, which use the XRP based on demand liquidity. We've actually talked about this before. This is when Ripple changed their strategy from the biggest clients to a huge amount of clients. And by the way, here is this escrow page. This is what it's looking like. Uh, let's see if we can also find the graph somewhere. We can here. Okay, it's still very low quality. Image source the block. Maybe we can find it like that. Let's quickly see. Let's see, there we go. This one is a little bit more beautiful, still pretty ugly, not gonna lie. Close this one, there we go, but it's okay. Uh, this is just the sales that they've done in what area. This has all been explained in their papers before, so you can find this. The question, however, is how much, uh, like, what, what are they doing with that, right? We do not know. Uh, you can see here, this is institutional sales and cryptocurrency exchanges, but what does that exactly mean? Mm, we're not quite sure, because, yeah, hmm. Institute, yeah, it could mean a lot of different things, right? There could be so many things falling under that block. Towards the end of Q2 2019, Ripple announced again the more conservative approach. And indeed, in the last five quarters, Ripple sales appear to be significantly lower. Whenever you see a news outlet claiming that Ripple is about to dump 1 billion XRP, you should know that it's never the case. Ripple has maintained a very conservative approach with maximum transparency. Not true, but really a lot of transparency. As mentioned in the Q4 2019 report, Ripple continues to focus solely on its over-the-counter sales with a few strategic partners who are building XRP utility and liquidity in strategic regions including EMEA and Asia. Ripple is determined to get more RippleNet members on automatic liquidity and XRP and has taken all necessary steps to achieve that. And that is that is kind of a question that does pop up, right? Because I'm reading this part here at the bottom. Why? Because it's a really interesting conclusion. That is because th if you think about it, Ripple's ultimate goal is to get as much going for XRP as possible. So if you really think about the money spending aspect, the only thing I would personally be afraid of is that Ripple is acquiring something which is really good for them, for Ripple, and not too good for us XRP holders. But ultimately, they can only spend this XRP on things that actually help out XRP drastically. Yet again, then Ripple says that XRP's, oh, sorry guys, Ripple's efforts actually did not influence the XRP price, and that does make you wonder. So keep in mind here, this is not a negative part. This is just something being completely real with you guys that I'm a little bit sad about when talking about Ripple because I would love for them to just show us what exactly are they doing with the money. What exactly is it to the freaking dot, right? That would be just juicy, but they do not. So I'm a little bit afraid that, you know, somebody's ever going to find something which they didn't like and make such a big thing out of it again. Another lawsuit is going to follow. Uh, am I really worried about that day to day? No, because ultimately I know Ripple most likely got this all figured out and ultimately too, I kind of think is that they li kind of lied to the to the judge or to the in the lawsuit case because honestly, can't really believe Ripple when they say that Ripple has never influenced the XRP price. I don't believe that for a little second. I believe they really influenced the price a lot. For example, when they put all the XP into escrow, the price of XRP really did a lot better because people trusted a lot more. And whenever Ripple gets a huge conference going or some partnerships get sealed, people just like that and people buy XP because of it because we know more utility is about to come. Should that be the way it's going to go? Well, maybe not. But maybe again, also yes, because they are one of the main builders of, of utility. And they have the most of the money. So even though I would consider that anybody could have done this had they had the XRP that Ripple has, anybody could have done a lot of the things that they do, it's Ripple right now. So if they put an effort and spend XRP, maybe not as Ripple as a company, but maybe just spending the XRP as kind of an XRP foundation, as the XRP uh, F, what's the XRP LF? What is it now called again? XRP foundation in some way. Yeah, that, that does normally, at least logically, in my opinion, should uh, increase the price a little bit. In the end, what I'm trying to say with this one is the whole 
escrow situation is not a bad thing. If you're thinking it's a bad thing, you're most likely just influenced by some people trying to FUD on you to make you fear or uncertain or doubt uh, about something. Because in the end of things, it's not a bad thing. They don't even necessarily sell the 100 million, they just keep it. You can actually find back if you want exactly what is being sold towards or what it's doing with that, the, the sales. But yeah, what exactly it means in the depths, you're not going to find out until they make that all completely public. But then again, if you think about a, a Bank of America partnership, if they have to pay for that, they of course cannot make it public that they have to pay for a Bank of America partnership. So from that perspective also, I'm like, ah. So it's a really difficult one, but ultimately I'm always bullish because it means that they are doing more work for XRP, right? They're putting in more work and they're getting more partnerships fixed. Otherwise they wouldn't have spent the money. Then SEC filing shows BlackRock held Bitcoin future contracts worth $6.15 million. All this is actually referring to is that they told us they're putting money into crypto. Um, and yeah, they actually were mostly getting into the the Nasdaq exchange, the IC, I think it was, um, what's that freaking name? It's somewhere down below here. We should check it out. Um, it's somewhere in here. They put some money into the exchange, the Nasdaq exchange. BlackRock acquired over 1 million class A common stock in the Nasdaq listed micro strategy. There we go. One of the first major companies to add Bitcoin to their balance sheet, but they now also have a final to actually have 37 Bitcoin future contracts worth $6.15 million. Pretty damn crazy. Cardano partners with Orion Protocol to bring scalability to DeFi and NFTs. Both companies have joined to work on a flexible groundwork for DeFi products and NFTs. Cardano's multi-asset blockchain will provide a greater interoperability for the Orion Protocol. Just a little side note for Cardano, if you are a bull, let me know in the comment section down below if you like that. Then talking about Hedera Hashgraph, network processes all-time high transactions in March, HBAR token surges by 200%, this coin is still pumping like crazy. I still think it's actually one of my best bets, even though I do not have that much HBAR, I still think it's a freaking solid one of a coin. Just going to quickly say that, guys. I hope this is actually not an April Fool's joke. I don't think so, right? That would be a little bit odd of a joke, but yeah, he works for Hedera. That would be a really strange joke. I think this is the truth. Here's why April might be one of the best months yet for the Bitcoin price. I still believe it, though. I still believe it. US dollar weakens is painting a bullish short-term outlook for Bitcoin in April. I've told you guys before, April is usually good for crypto. Here it says it once more, right? April is good. April is good. April is good. I still think it will follow this year once more. Then pension funds and insurance firms alive to Bitcoin investment proposal. It's all just showing the same thing as this one right here um, about BlackRock. We know. The institutions are getting in. Pension funds, all these big guys with billions or trillions of dollars, they'll get in. Banks, whatever you call it, you name it, they'll be getting in. They want to get rid of the dollar. They're a little bit afraid of all the inflation and everything that's happening. They want to get into crypto. We all know it. It might take a little bit of time, but they are getting there, guys. Do not worry. Do not fret. Um, you might be thinking dusty, but you're talking about Bitcoin, not about... Uh, don't worry. All right. Whenever I'm saying Bitcoin, I mean, that's the entry. That's the gateway to getting into crypto. Usually when they look up their stuff, eventually they'll get into XRP. But for that, we need the proper regulation, which hopefully is coming pretty damn soon. So, yeah, this is kind of a call to action. If you aren't into crypto just quite yet, think about it. All these bigger guys are entering the space. They're looking for a good entry or are already in or are just thinking about something. If you really haven't gotten yourself some crypto, I am not saying you should. This is not financial advice, but I am saying think about it. Yet at least think about it and do your own due diligence, look into it really properly and see if it is worth the risk for you. For me, it is. For a lot of people, it is. And it's just a golden opportunity, in my opinion. As I said before, if I didn't hold XRP, it could it could be a multi-million dollar mistake. Even a, a small amount of XRP could be in the end of things. That was it for today, though. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. If you want any other content, any other coin covered, let me know in the comments section down below. See you guys again in another crypto update.